Hello everyone and welcome back to this episode of uh, me talking about my video collection. I believe this will be the last episode as we've only got a few tapes left. Uh, but at the end of this video I also want to just quickly show uh, something quite special as well. Um, not VHS but DVDs and box sets um, as well. So, without further ado, um, let's get this last lot of tapes out of the way. First of all, we've got Mean Dog Blues. Uh, no one escapes prison number four alive. So this is a prison exploitation movie. Um, we've got an amazing looking hand-drawn cover. Uh, very, very sort of akin to Italian exploitation movies of the 80s in the cover. I don't believe this is Italian. Um, we've got a prison guard with solar flares in his eyes, both glasses there. Uh, we've got a snarling dog um, at what looks like a metal fence. Uh, we've got Scatman Crothers in this and George Kennedy. So, uh, all the stars are in this film. Um, yeah, so very much a low-budget prison exploitation film. That's Mean Dog Blues. Next we've got The Comeback. Uh, a, what looks like a very by-the-numbers horror film. Um, we've got a gentleman on the front with an axe and a corpse and the tagline reads is she the victim of a bizarre murder or will she be back who knows um and the stills on the back confirm this is a very by the numbers horror we've got a corpse another one an evil granny some uh hanky panky happening there and some what looks like some scheming Grandpas, that's the comeback. Next we've got Snow Kill. Um, so a quite a cheap looking cover there. Very posed, doesn't look like a still from the film. Looks like it was made during promotional photo shoots for the film. Just three sort of men standing posing with guns. Um, the deadliest animal in the wilderness is what? I mean, you'd expect it to say is man, but apparently, yeah, the deadliest animal in the wilderness is snow kill. Um, so it looks like a thriller set in the snow, I guess. That's what it is, maybe. That's snow kill. Now here's something a little bit different. We've got Cartoon Time. Uh, this is a collection of um, some incredibly low budget cartoons from around the 40s and 50s. Um, very much like off, off, off Disney kind of cartoons with very basic plot lines. Um, just like one of them is a bunch of cartoons wake up in a toy shop and decide to run amok for about 10 minutes. Just generic chaos. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Cartoon time. There's, it's, a, it's a chronology, it's a collection of uh, shorts. Um, that's weird. They're what is what looks like an Arabic terrorist holding a gun on the front cover. I'd never noticed that before. That's that's appropriate for a uh, look at that. Wow, cartoon time for fun for all your children. Jeez. Next, we've got one of my absolute favorites. Strike Commando, the ultimate destruction. Uh, this is an incredible movie uh, directed by a um, Italian bad movie auteur named Bruno Mattai um, under the pseudonym of Vincent Dorn. 
Um, this is a very, very subpar Rambo ripoff. Um, we've got the hero played by Reb Brown running around in the wilderness, shooting guns and yelling. Um, there's a lot to talk about in this film. Um, me and my friend Jim did a review of this uh, for our Bachelor Boys series. Uh, if you can track that down. Uh, we talk at length about the wonders of Strike Commando. But yeah, just look at that cover. It's, it's amazing. Another one of my favorites, Sorority Babes of the Slime Ball Ballarama. Um, an amazing movie, a David Decoteau film. Um, just so exemplary of, of 80s cheese. Um, a bunch of teens in an abandoned bowling alley. We've got sexy girls. We've got a imp creature that runs amok and, and, and basically kills people. Um, we've got the three uh, scream, scream queens of the 80s in this. We've got Linnea Quigley, Brinke Stevens. Not sure if Michelle Bauer is in this, but I believe she might be. Um, if you're, if you know me in real life, you might have come to my second bad movie cinema night where I screened this gem. Um, yeah, Sorority Babes in the Slime Ball Bowlerama. Awesome movie. Time Burst, The Final Alliance. Uh, we, <laughs> um, yeah, awesome cover. Hand drawn again. Uh, just things that completely seem out of place in any other context. A samurai and a man with a gun. Um, yeah, we've got a samurai master, a lone warrior, in a battle for the secret of immortality. Yeah, this <laughs> is again exemplary of 80s cheese. Um, this, yeah, it, it's a very bad film, action film, kind of tries to combine martial arts, sci-fi, action, um, just throw a bunch of stuff and together and see what sticks. Um, yeah, very 80s cheese. Time Burst. That font is amazing. Next, we've got uh, something from, from Asia. We've got Mr. Vampire, part three. Uh, it's apparently a Hong Kong classic. Um, it doesn't look that terrible. I mean, it looks like a B movie, but it looks competently produced. Um, I have not actually watched this yet, but um, yeah, it's uh, probably not quite like the rest of my films. It's not a terrible film um, based on what I can gather from the cover. Mr. Vampire. Wow. Continuing with our theme of 80s uh, cheese, we've got Joysticks. Uh, this is a uh, video game arcade themed teen comedy romp about a bunch of teens that must come together to save their beloved um, video game arcade from a tycoon or developer or somebody that wants to close it down. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's, um, we've got John Grease in this, uh, who played Uncle Rico in Napoleon Dynamite. It's probably the most famous person in this. And Joe Don Baker, who you might know if you're a Mystery Science Theatre fan, as Mitchell. Um, yeah, it's a really fun movie, actually. It's not all that terrible, it's pretty low budget, but there's a lot of fun in this film. Another badass cover, we've got Master Blaster. Um, again, a awesome hand-drawn cover. Looks kind of similar to Deadly Prey, just like a, a crazy killer soldier guy in the wilderness yelling. Um, we've got a babe with a gun. Um, 
And uh, yeah, the screenshots sort of confirm that it's set in some sort of wilderness with some kind of a, a super soldier guy that, you know, it's very Rambo. Just think Rambo, but low budget. That's Master Blaster. We've got Taken by Force, a biker themed thriller. Um, doesn't sound all that pleasant. Looks quite low budget. It stars nobody of note. I have not watched this yet. Um, yeah, just, uh, yeah, let's get a bunch of bikers together and, and make a, a movie where they're probably villains, I guess. Taken by force. Lorenzo Lamas in Cybertech PD. Um, again, we've got Lorenzo Lamas, the uh, sort of a failed martial arts kind of guy. Um, I believe he was in the show Renegade, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and uh, yeah, this is another one of his sort of mid-90s output. Um, what looks like a very by-the-numbers action film with a bit of sci-fi maybe thrown in just for, for good measure. We've got the word cyber in the title, which I'm always a big fan of. Um, somebody calls it a virtual reality roller coaster. So yeah, very kind of beginning of the digital age action movie. Today we have virtual reality, tomorrow it has us. So yeah, in the sort of mid-90s, everybody was kind of afraid of new, new technology. The internet, virtual reality, that's it. Mindstorm, a very crappy low-budget cover, very crappy low-budget font. Uh, the tagline reads, they built their machines for pleasure, but they forgot. First the pleasure, then the pain. So again, probably technology themed. Uh, we've got multiple boobs on the back cover. Um, yeah, uh, looks like some sort of a sexy thriller. There's talk about a mind-altering CD-ROM <laughs> on the back. <laughs> Which sounds hilarious. Is it... yeah. Outdated technology is something that I will always take pleasure in when it's talked about in these kind of movies. CD-ROM. <laughs> We've got Robo Warriors. Retreat is not an option, starring James Remar. Um, yeah, so the cover just tells me that it's about robots. Um, we've got a dinosaur robot on the back. Um, yeah, it looks like it's some sort of a special effects fest, but probably very middling special effects, like very early mid early uh, to mid 90s CGI yeah that's Robo Warriors I do have to admit I like that font though monster in the closet uh, this is a trauma release we've got Lloyd Kaufman and trauma there um, was it a deranged killer, or was it just looking for a date? I do like trauma films. I think they're made with a knowledge that they're kind of bad, so I'm not... I don't have as much of a, I guess, love for them as I do for bad movies that were made earnestly. But I can always appreciate a good trauma film. They're entertaining. Just not for the same reason that bad movies that are actually bad movies are entertaining. Monster in the Closet. Blah!
Dragon Fury. Uh, this is exemplary of mid 90s technology themed futuristic action martial arts cheese. If you wanna, if you want a in-depth analysis of this film, I did do a review of this film on this channel. Check it out if you want, but it is terribly bad. It features time travel, martial arts, um, idiots, just, just very, very low budget, earnestly made, um, crappy action movie, which is all things that I love. That's Dragon Fury. We've got Tom Selleck in The Runaway, or just Runaway. Um, don't really know much about this film, but it actually doesn't look horrendous to me. Like, it looks like it was a middle-of-the-road kind of action sci-fi in the 80s. Um, so I don't really have any jokes to make about this. Um, we've got Gene Simmons in this film, apparently, and I believe this is based on Michael Crichton's book. So there you go, Runaway. Uh, nomads, they're not of this world. Um, we've got what looks like Pierce Brosnan. Yes, it is Pierce Brosnan. Um, and it's a John McTiernan film. So it's a supernatural thriller. And I don't believe this is terrible. I believe this is actually pretty decent. Um, I just bought it because it seems fairly rare, especially on VHS. Uh, but there you go, is Nomads. The Channeler. So this, this looks terrible. Um, first we've got a incredibly blurry photo on the cover. Uh, what looks like just a simple still from the film of a guy on fire. Um, we've got Dan Haggerty in this film. The gentleman with the beard. Um, we've got a man, a gentleman there with a burnt face. So this looks like some sort of a horror revenge thriller. And Richard Harrison is in this. He uh, partook in many, many terrible ninja movies made by Godfrey Ho in uh, Asia in the 80s. So that's the channel for you. Mean combat. <laughs> Um, is there any other kind of combat? Nice combat? Well, this is about mean combat. Um, we've got a man in what looks like some sort of a, uh, motorbike tank looking thing. And a soldier there as well. Um, so... Don't really know much about this film, apart from the fact that it's about mean combat. And the distribution company for this film is called Fort Bacon, which I find quite amusing. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's Mean Combat for you. Mad Jake. Uh, I believe this is a trucker themed or redneck themed um, sort of, yeah, comedy action horror, I guess. Um, we've got John Saxon there, who uh, partook in many low-budget movies in this sort of 80s time period. Um, as, as I said earlier, he's, he was, I know him best from Enter the Dragon. Uh, we've got Evander Holyfield in this film. Um, yes, world heavyweight champion Evander Holyfield. Um, so yeah, a trucker or redneck themed movie. Mm. 
Get the Terrorists. Uh, I love that title. It makes me chuckle every time I say it out loud. Just such a lazy title. W what are they doing in the movie? They're getting the terrorists. Yeah, alright, get the terrorists, whatever. Um, yeah, just a very cheap looking action film. Um, with a very cheap looking cover. Yeah, I probably influenced by Rambo, I'm guessing. But, yeah. And my very last VHS that I'm going to show you guys is Street Hunter, um, starring Steve James and Reb Brown of Strike Commando and Space Mutiny fame. So already we know that this is going to be low budget cheese. Not really much to say about this one. Looks to be action on the streets, kind of urban based action, I guess. So that's Street Hunter for you. Alright guys, so now I just want to show you a few box sets that I've collected from a particular company. Uh, it's an amazing company uh, called Mill Creek Entertainment. And they, what they do, from what I can understand, is they put together these humongous box sets of public domain films. I believe they're all public domain, or at least they seem like they would be. I don't understand how they'd be able to get so many movies together if they weren't. But anyway, the first one that I've got to show you here is... 250 movies. Yep, that's right. Horror Collection. This is a box containing 250 movies on DVD. Um, we've got, well, advertised, we've got the, the horror legends here, Christopher Lee, Vincent Price, Bela Lugosi, Karloff, etc. Um, but yeah, they're only in a few of these movies. The vast majority is just obscure crap. So let's have a look here. We've got things like Alien Contamination. Uh, we've got three movies with the word alien in the title. Alien Species, Alien Zone, um, The Ape and The Ape Man. That's pretty good, getting both ape-themed movies in one box. Uh, the Bat with Vincent Price and The Bat with Jack Pickford. Uh, so many that I could read out right now. It's, it's quite overwhelming. Um, we've got House of Danger, House of Mystery, House of Secrets, House of the Living Dead, and House on Haunted Hill. That's a lot of houses there. Um, we've got the classic Egar is in this, the, the caveman movie, uh, made famous by Mystery Science Theater. Um, we've got The Phantom, The Phantom Creeps, The Phantom Express, and The Phantom from 10,000 Leagues. And The Phantom from Space, and The Phantom of 42nd Street, Phantom of Soho, Phantom of the Opera, The Phantom Planet, so many phantoms. Um, it's quite, like I said, quite overwhelming. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> what else? We've got The Lost City Part 1, The Lost City Part 2, The Lost Jungle, The Lost World. Um, quite a few Hercules movies is, uh, in here as well. Hercules Against the Moon Men, Hercules and the Captive Women, Hercules and the Masked Rider, Hercules and the Tyrants of Babylon, Hercules Unchained. Um, just so many. Uh, this could keep keep someone occupied for a long, long time. And if I had the time, I would review each and every one of these films on this channel. I just... I don't have the time, okay? Got lots of things to do. Um, so that's 250 Movies Collection. I'm just gonna open it up and show you how they're actually packaged. To get this... This box in here. Gonna open it off camera.
And in the box you've got a bunch of these little plastic cards. So they're actually double-sided discs. We've got two movies per disc. Um, so yeah, that's quite a lot of these in here. Um, it can get quite difficult to find the movie that you want to actually watch. And look at this. The last movie I was watching, I remember, was Metropolis, the Fritz Lang classic. Um, amazing film. Definitely watch that movie. Not a bad movie at all. So that's the 250 movie collection, but I also want to show you some still very impressive 50 movie collections. Blah! The Tomb of Terrors. 50 movies. Um, yeah, another Mill Creek box set. We've got 50 fairly recent, but very obscure, low-budget movies. Um, I have... <laughs> I have not really heard of many of these at all. Um, we've got the Sorority Babes in the Slimeball Bolarama. The sequel to that is called Sorority Babes in the dance thon of Death. And that is one of the worst films I have ever seen. I have actually watched this, or tried to watch it, and it is a shot on video what looks like some something somebody did uh, for like a amateur film school project. Um, we've got Granny. <laughs> um, I love that word, Granny. We've got Gorno. What looks like the mixture of the words gore and porno. Not really keen to check that one out. Barely legal lesbian vampires. Just obscure city in here. Um, have not heard of very many of these at all. Um, what else? Kill them and eat them. Pleasant. Uh, <laughs> so that's the Tomb of Terrors 50 movie collection. Next we've got 50 chilling classics. Um, so let's have a look what we get here. We've got uh, the classic Peter Jackson early film Bad Taste is in this collection. Uh, the Driller Killer, the Abel Ferrara horror. Um, so yeah, quite a mixture of sort of newish and, and older movies. Uh, Deep Red, the Dario Argento film is here. Um, Jesse James meets Frankenstein's daughter. That's a, that's a classic, all right. Oasis of the Zombies. Uh, yeah, Scream Bloody Murder, Silent Night, Bloody Night. Not Silent Night, Deadly Night, as a distinction. Uh, Snow Beast, Track of the Moon Beast, uh, I believe that was featured on Mystery Science Theater as well. Werewolf in a Girl's Dormitory. Mmm. So that's the 50 Chilling Classics collection. Next we've got uh, 50 Martial Arts movies, including... <laughs> Such classics as Black Cobra 1, 2, and 3, starring Fred Williamson. We've got Ninja Death 1, 2, and 3. Um, we've got The Real Bruce Lee, starring Bruce Lee. Although, I believe this also features quite a few um, movies that were made shortly after Lee's death, where they tried to sort of pass him off uh, pass other actors off as Bruce Lee um, with similar sort of sounding names like Bruce Lee with an I and the movie's called Image of Bruce Lee so desperately trying to milk his um, his image and his name and his style shortly after he died um, yeah this is the 50 martial arts collection Then we've got the 50 Warriors collection. This is a swords and sandals and swords and sorcery kind of collection. Um, 
I'm a big, big fan of sword and sorcery movies, especially uh, low budget bad ones. Uh, although this collection is more so kind of historical epics. A lot of sort of Italian films from the uh, 60s and 70s in here. Uh, a few, uh, quite, quite a lot of Hercules movies. I won't read them all out, but there's uh, what looks to be about 10 Hercules films. Um, lots of uh, historical themed kind of hero movies. Um, Thor is in this, Thor and the Amazon Women. Um, yeah, that's the 50 Warriors collection. And the very last box set, and the very last thing I'm going to show you guys, the is the Decrepit Crypt of Nightmares. Um, this is, again, a 50 movie pack, and again features sort of similar similar movies to the Tomb of Terrors, so kind of very low budget, recent and semi-recent movies, um, mostly horror. Um, quite a few funny sounding um, items here. We've got I Dream of Dracula, Hip Hop Locos, uh, <laughs> Prehistoric Bimbos in Armageddon City. Um, that sounds incredible actually. I need to check that out. Catholic Ghoul Girls. Blood-sucking babes from B. 